This is one of the largest metro projects in the world, spanning at 109 meter across a desert city. The $22.5 billion Riyadh Metro is an incredible feat of engineering, but this is more than just a mega project. It's also about image building and showing that the country is progressive. It is modern for the last decade. Saudi Arabia has been investing billions of its oil revenues into engineering a legacy that will outlive the man on the throne. Now, the country is gearing up to host two huge world events, both of which would bring money, tourism, and political clout. It's a golden opportunity for the kingdom in its quest to transform its economy and improve its human rights reputation on the world stage. It also turns up the pressure to complete this massive infrastructure project that's already years behind schedule. This is Saudi Arabia's race to finish the railway that could open its doors to the world. This is the Riyadh Metro Network, six lines, 85 stations, and 109 meter of new track stretching across a city built on sand. Most cities build something of this scale in a number of phases over a number of decades. But Saudi Arabia is turning these flashy renderings into reality, in just one phase making it one of the world's largest single-phase metro projects. That's because Riyadh is a city with big ambitions. It's really remarkable that transformation that happened over 30 years or so. The physical environment has changed, the social structure has changed, and it's just a very different atmosphere. A very different vibe in the 70s, the city used the country's oil profits to expand its infrastructure around the automobile. Riyadh has gone through some big changes. Since then, its urban environment has expanded as the population has grown nearly 20 times large. Women were granted the right to drive and international tourists can now visit much like in the rest of the, the city still has a strong car thanks in part to how hot it is to actually walk anywhere but if you are looking even further to the future car centric cities aren't really at the forefront of innovation. A new electric driverless public transit city. Now that's overthinking investment. The Riyadh Metro has been in the works for over a decade and it's been the kingdom set some very big goals. Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman wants to make the capital city an international business hub which would double its population by two. But the world is still where kingdom which has spent decades in isolation and has been con violations. If the country wants a chance to turbocharge its growth and reshape its international image, hosting a massive world event is a pretty good place to start. Saudi Arabia has been elected to host World Expo 2030, which will welcome tens of millions of tourists from more than 100 countries. It's also the front runner to host the 2034 World Cup. Both events will put Riyadh at the center of billions of dollars. In construction projects like this new stadium proposal for Qadiya City which is envisioned to be Saudi Arabia's new entertainment hub. When you look at all the other mega projects ongoing in Riyadh right now they are not going to make sense whatsoever if there is no transportation network linking these developments together so it's crucial element in Saudi's vision 2030 to have the metro actually opening. Very soon constructing something of this scale is challenging but doing it all in the desert makes things even tougher. It's a harsh desert climate you would have to take into consideration the effect of heat, the effect of sandstorms and also in the winter it can get quite cold as well you would have to select proper materials that can withstand the effect of these fluctuating temperatures on the Riyadh metro. The train cars had to be specially designed to account for extreme high temperatures and sand contractors had to adapt the way they stored concrete outside because it was so hot that the top layer started to dry. Before before they could pour it, three massive tunnels boring machines were used to drill and excavate 40% of the route which runs beneath the city, weaving around existing building foundations and utilities. And there's a law that bans some laborers from working certain hours in the middle of the day, when the temperatures are dangerously high but the physical environment wasn't only chilly. The former governor of Riyadh was arrested in the Crown Prince 2017 crackdown for alleged corruption in the Riyadh metro project. The 2020 pandemic caused supply chain disruptions across the country and in 21 some of the main contractors on the project sent some staff home over a more than 1 billion dollar payment dispute delays on infrastructure projects are pretty common around the world it famously took new york city nearly 100 years from the time it was proposed to actually finish the second avenue subway the riyadh metro was originally set to open in 2019 just five years after construction began now the royal commission for riyadh expects to announce the opening gate of the metro's 
soon on a project like this time is money and Saudi Arabia has a lot of money for the last few years. The Riyadh Metro contract was signed back in 2013 that meant architecture, engineering and construction companies all over the world were competing for a slice of the $22.5 billion budget. In the end, more than 30 international and local firms and many more suppliers and some contractors were selected to work on the project. Among those chosen ones were some very high profile companies like Zaha Hadid Architects. Well, architecture has historically always been associated with power and there is a sort of gravitation by architects to have projects and to endless clients and clearly governments and various state institutions are the one who have the means to provide that at this point in history a lot of big budget architecture and construction projects are being commissioned by oil rich gulf states while locals do stand to benefit from some mega projects there's another potential payoff as well international tourism and reputation building there is a downside of course because sometimes projects like that can be a way for autocratic regimes to mask human rights abusers in neighboring country Qatar the 2022 World Cup brought a new level of global scrutiny on labor practices in the region. Thousands of migrant workers have reportedly died in the country in the past decade, not all related to the FIFA World Cup. Work-related deaths on World Cup stadiums like many countries around the world, Saudi Arabia relies on migrant construction labor. Human rights experts are concerned about the potential exploitation of a power imbalance and risk around heat stress, debt bondage, and general construction site safety. The Royal Commission for the Riyadh City didn't respond to our request for comment on how its approach labor protections on the Riyadh Metro project, despite its promotional videos on the Riyadh Metro isn't as glittery as Saudi Arabia's newer projects like Neom, a futuristic city in the desert, but it's the backbone of much bigger vision to re-engineer the country's future. Once the metro finally opens, Riyadh will face its next challenge, getting Saudis to ditch their cars and actually use the train. Whether that will actually transpire remains to be seen, but definitely the underlying framework, the infrastructure is there for that to happen. Subscribe us and like the video for more informative videos like this.